that um, they're on our ministry team at uh, church and uh, we see people get physically healed, set free from spiritual bondage uh, just about every Sunday. So it's pretty exciting. Um, so it was a few years ago that God led me into the ministry of deliverance, which is the casting out of evil spirits. Um, I had gone to church most of my life, and I never heard, or at least I don't recall, hearing about deliverance. Uh, and I would, I think many American Christians would believe that um, Christians can't have an evil spirit, um, and that casting out evil spirits is something that Jesus did and the disciples did, but it's not something we do today. I know when I would read the Bible and I would come to those scriptures, I'd think, oh, that's interesting. But never did I once think, I'm supposed to do that. Um, so I, I think that we are supposed to continue the ministry of Jesus by healing the sick, uh, spreading the gospel, and casting out evil spirits. Uh, Matthew 10, 1 says, and when he had called his disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Mark 16, 17 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So it sounds like we're supposed to do that. Uh, when you read scripture about people being possessed, typically that's the translation, the word they use, uh, the translation isn't the greatest from Greek to English. Uh, a better transa translation would be to be subject to demonic influence or to be demonized. So you might ask, can a Christian be possessed? Well, no, they can't. Um, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, but they can torment our soul, our physical bodies, um, so they can be demonized or subject to demonic influence. Uh, just like, you know, I wouldn't ever say, well, you're a Christian, now you can't have sickness. Well, no, that's not true. Um, so the same with the spiritual warfare. Uh, Ephesians 6.11 says, Put on the full armor of God, so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. So there's a reason we have armor. We're in a battle. Uh, he wouldn't have told us to put on armor if we weren't going to fight. There are many ways that someone can come under demonic oppression. One of those is generational curses. And there's several scriptures that talk about children being punished for the sins of the father. Uh, one of those is Exodus 20, verse 5. You shall not bow down to idols or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Uh, other ways for demonic oppression could be from abuse that was done to you. Uh, so sexual, verbal, physical abuse. It doesn't have to be something, a door that you open. It could be a door that someone else opened in your life. Uh, witchcraft, trauma, sexual sin, disobedience to God, using drugs and alcohol, that's not just an open door, that's an invitation. So you see these crimes that are so horrific, usually they're under the influence. Involvement in the occult, consulting with psychics, word curses that were spoken over us, believing lies of the enemy, addictions, pornography, watching violent or scary movies, listening to sexual or vulgar music, abortion, and unforgiveness. So these are all open doors for the demonic to come in, harass, and torment. Uh, there's a story that is about a Japanese soldier that 
may help put all this into perspective. It was the end of World War II, Japan had surrendered, but there were several Japanese soldiers in the Philippines that would not surrender. They were notified several times that the war was over, um, but they believed, uh, well, they, they just didn't believe it. Uh, their families wrote them letters and told them the war is over, come home. They dropped them out of the airplanes. They just didn't believe it. They still wouldn't surrender. So finally, after 29 years, there was one man left, Hiro Onoda. He said he would only surrender if he was ordered to. His former commander traveled from Japan to formally relieve him from duty by order of the emperor in 1974. He enlisted at 18 and he left at age 70. When we surrender our lives to the Lord, the enemy doesn't just throw up the white flag and say, oh, Christian, can't touch him. I feel like he comes harder. He gets, he's like, okay, words of hell, go after that one, we got a new one. So we have victory through Jesus Christ, but there may be areas that the enemy needs to be commanded out of. So how do you know if someone is under demonic oppression? So there's an extreme end where maybe people hear voices, uh, they may harm themselves by cutting, or they may have suicidal thoughts. Uh, they could be physically attacked. Uh, one lady that I ministered to, she would be held down on her bed by a demonic entity. Uh, another lady would see demons in her living room. Uh, one man, he would be in church and he would just start manifesting and they'd have to take him out of church. Uh, so there could be an area of your life that you can't get victory over. It doesn't have to be some extreme thing like that. It could just be, um, maybe it's fear. With COVID, uh, I feel like fear and anxiety has just increased exponentially. Uh, maybe you struggle with rage or depression. Maybe there's a sickness or a pain that doctors can't diagnose. They've done every kind of test on you. Uh, Sorry, uh, you know, uh, they could be demonic. Uh, something that is plaguing the church is pornography addiction. 77% of Christian men say they look at pornography once a month. 36% view it daily. And it's not just men with this problem. But what comes with pornography addiction is shame, and it keeps you in bondage. I think that some people believe if they just lay low and they don't mess with Satan, he won't mess with them. But that's what he wants you to believe. So like on your pamphlets today, it says, 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. One time I was telling one of my friends about the deliverance ministry, and she actually put her hands over her ears and she said, I don't want to know, I don't want to know. And it kind of shocked me, And um, but it scared her when I was telling her stories. Um, but if there was a thief walking around your house looking for a way in, you would want to know. Uh, so being unaware of the thief does you no good and you'll probably be robbed. Uh, children are not off limits to the enemy. Doesn't seem fair. Uh, 